In this lesson, we'll go through the process of drawing out a 3D model onto our ZBrush canvas and begin working with it. So when we start out, there's just a few things that we want to clarify when you're starting to work in ZBrush or you're going to face some frustration. So what we want to do is I just want to bring on a 3D model and be able to start sculpting on it. So how can we do that? Well, we need to go into our tool palette to be able to access our geometry to draw it onto the canvas, first of all. So this large icon here is where we're going to access our meshes. So these are all primitive meshes that we can utilize to begin working in ZBrush. If you've imported an OBJ file or you've created a, a mesh in some other fashion in ZBrush, that will show up here as well. Okay, and this is where we can save these out. So to start with, let's say I want to start with uh, by sculpting a sphere. So what I would do is I would select the sphere. So let's say I don't have it selected. Maybe I have a cube, but I go in and I select a sphere. Now I want to draw it onto the canvas. So I'm going to click and drag onto the canvas. So right now, if I try to, to select any sort of sculpting brush, I can't do that. What's happening is I'm actually just drawing this with depth onto our ZBrush canvas. So it looks 3D and it does have depth, but I'm not able to move or rotate around at all. It's basically dropped down to a flat canvas. Okay. Now we are seeing depth on that, but it's kind of a painting with depth. Okay. We're not working with a 3D piece of geometry. It's just a flat plane, so we can't really rotate around it and, and manipulate it. Anytime I try to, to paint or sculpt, I'm actually just drawing out a, another uh, sphere here. Okay. To clear out the canvas, to clear all the information on the canvas, we can just hit Control N to clear that out. If we want to deal with this as a 3D model, we need to draw it onto the canvas, and then we immediately need to go to edit mode. And we can either select this button or we can just hit T on our keyboard. That will bring up edit mode, and now I can rotate around our mesh. Okay, By just uh, left clicking, I can rotate around. By alt left clicking, I can pan around. Okay, And then if I hit alt, begin to move it, and then release Alt, I can move in and out. Okay, So it's a little bit uh, maybe odd, but you'll get used to it once you start working here in ZBrush. So now with this as a 3D model, I can access it um, by, through sculpting. The, uh, the floor you can see, I can turn off and on. You can also see it orthographically or with perspective distortion on it. Now what happens if I try to sculpt this? So I can select a particular sculpting brush. I've just got the standard brush selected. And if I try to sculpt this, it's going to give you a message. Okay, We can't actually sculpt anything because this is still a 3D primitive. Okay, So because this is a primitive, um, and we'll talk more about this a uh, little later on in the basics of creating geometry, because this is a primitive, we aren't able to sculpt it. So what we need to do now is make that a poly mesh. So once I've hit Make Poly Mesh 3D, the name of this will change slightly. And now if we come in, we can begin to sculpt on this. Okay, We can go in to Geometry, and we can start to divide this. So Control-D is the hotkey for that. We can start to subdivide it. So in ZBrush, you just subdivide your mesh, and then you can get a nice smooth mesh to be able to sculpt. And then those subdivisions are here, and you can always go up and down. And again, we'll cover this more later. But all this time, we're in edit mode. Anytime we are sculpting on this, we are kind of, uh, manipulating it, we're in edit mode. Now we can also move this around, but we're going from draw mode into move, scale, and rotate. We're still leaving edit mode on. So I can kind of move this around, and then when I want to start sculpting again, I can go back to draw mode. So if you've got a 3D mesh, and you want to be able to sculpt on it, you're going to have edit mode enabled. And if you're not transforming it, you're going to have draw mode enabled too if you want to sculpt it. Okay, so two things to, to really take away from this. You want to make sure you're in edit mode if you're dealing with a 3D model after you draw it onto the canvas. And you also, if you're going to be sculpting, you want to make sure that you convert that primitive if you're using a primitive shape from ZBrush. You want to make sure that you make that PolyMesh 3D. Okay, so what happens here, this is sort of raised up above the surface of the canvas if you think about it like a flat plane back there. So if I sort of rotate it around, and now let's say I want to drop it down to the canvas, all I have to do is turn off edit mode. Okay, and now I suddenly, I can't rotate anymore, but all those changes that I made have been saved into this tool, 
into this Z tool. And so now when I draw on, you can see that the Z tool that I'm drawing out is the same as the one that I just sculpted. So it has all of that sculpted detail on it. So I'm kind of just placing instances. So this is really good for creating sort of illustrations because in ZBrush, uh, the pixels don't just contain color information. They actually contain color information, material information, depth information. So you're creating sort of what they say a two and a half D uh, image here. We can't pick it up and move it around. If we want to pick it up and move it around, we have to go back, clear the canvas, draw this out, and immediately hit T to go to edit mode, and then we're back editing our Z tool. All right. Now up here we also uh, have the ability to go through our history. So I can come in here and just kind of scroll through the different things that I've done to this sphere and go back and forth. And you can also, if you want to hit undo, you can go through that as well. And those can the number of undos can be set also, but I just wanted to mention that uh, feature up there in case you know, do something that you want to undo. You can go back and kind of search for the place that you want to keep that. Okay, so I just wanted to give you kind of a quick run through um, and really emphasize the importance of edit mode and also of making your mesh a poly mesh if you want to begin sculpting it. Remember, if you happen to get out of edit mode and now it's dropped and you can't rotate around, don't panic at all. All you have to do is, you know, assuming you want to get rid of this image, you can go ahead and clear the canvas and then simply draw that same tool back out again. That information that you've created has not been lost if you drop it to the canvas. Go back to edit mode and there you go. Do all of the rest of your sculpting on your particular model. And again, we'll talk more about this later, but to save out your particular Z tool as a file, you just go to save as and it'll save it as a .ztl file. Okay, so let's go in in the next lesson and talk in a little bit more depth about the 2.5D canvas. So talking just a little bit more about pixels and uh, the kind of information that they contain and you know, if you want to do some illustration, uh, how you can sort of do that. So we'll go ahead and do that next.